Yes. Just to plug in here, I like um, what the Course in Miracles. Yeah, sorry. I like what the Course in Miracles says about guilt. That it's just an attempt to make another person feel angry. I mean, anger. Is anger it? is just another attempt to make someone feel guilty, and it works both ways. Um, when you are working with guilt, to recognize that it's your own projection of your sense of separation and to bring it back to your own oneness eliminates the guilt and the recognition that you are one. Um, it's always bringing it back to the oneness and the love. There are many, many teachings on the planet that are valuable teachings because, and I do want to say more about the golden age that we're entering here, uh, but there are many, many teachings that are very, very valuable. The master teachers have always been around. There's never been a time on planet Earth there wasn't a master teacher you could refer to or read or something when you were stuck. Today, there are millions of them. It's, we're swarming with people who are awakening or have awakened, have insight, just go to your metaphysical bookstore, my goodness, you know, those books couldn't have existed a hundred years ago. Uh, certainly wouldn't have been sold, nobody would sell them and nobody would want to be seen buying them, you'd be burned at the stake uh, for that uh, sort of thing. But there are many, many, several of you remember being burned at the stake, aha, cool. <laughs> uh, <coughs> You were just a little ahead of your time. Um, many teachings on the planet, and I, refer, I have my favorites, and I actually bring them. I'm going to play some clips from some of my favorite teachers. I hear Ram Dass and Abraham and some others. I'll, I'll play some short clips from those. Uh, we have lots of ways of getting help and assistance in our insight these days. The Course in Miracles is one of our favorites. You know, some people like it, some people think it's a little silly. But if you just read the first couple of pages in A Course in Miracles, you know, it makes statements that are sound as if they're confronting the ego. And that's because they're confronting the ego. <laughs> Nothing is what it appears to be. Everything in your life you made up. Yeah. Anything you perceive is your perception, is your creation. Everybody perceives things differently. No two people are in the same reality. You know, there's just, it's just cut to the chase. If you're ready for this, let's go to the absolute truth. The absolute truth is, did anybody see um, Out on a Limb? Shirley MacLaine came out in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, Shirley MacLaine standing on the beach with her teacher and her teacher says, now say, I am God. Oh, I can't say that, that would be arrogant, you know. But she ends up saying, I am God. Yes. No, it seems like, <clears throat> I've lived on the planet quite a long time, and this is the most um, uh, divisive we are in the United States, just in everybody's attitude about what is real and what's the truth than we've ever been. And I'm thinking that maybe this is going to cause a some sort of a convergence at some point where we let go of the beliefs of both sides and come to something. Your, your vision coincides with mine, yeah. Yeah. The golden age is... We, we tend to not believe that things change on planet Earth very much because we see every day kind of being the same. But there have been some huge changes on this planet from time to time. Uh, our recorded history, what we can read about in the books and the archaeologists discover and stuff like that, only goes back a few thousand years, you know, we, we just don't know what was happening. We have myths, we have mythology about Atlantis, and Lemuria, and 
stories like that that are kind of interesting and fun and gosh, I, wouldn't it be cool if that was true and all that, but we don't have the recorded history, just mythology. One of our mythologies is the Garden of Eden. You know, the time when gods and goddesses walked on the earth. Um, sorry, it's not mythology. It happens. It happens every 26,000 years. You know, whether you're into astrology or not, each astrological age has a purpose. It has a, a, a function. It is a different energy than the other ages, therefore facilitating learning in certain areas. Now, we're just leaving the Piscean age. And the Piscean age teaches through the use of power over other people. That's pretty obvious. That's what's going on right now. It's in its death throes. It's trying to survive. It can't. It's saying, power control, you know, domination. All of that's including genocide and everything, the whole kit and caboodle, you know. The Aquarian age, which follows that age, is the age of enlightenment. It's coming together. It's coming together. Duality and time are two of the big teachers on planet Earth. For every right, there's a wrong. For every up, there's a down. There's an opposite of this and that and the other. There's no duality in reality. There's just duality in third dimension time space. And the merging of duality is a head-to-head -head battle, and that's what we're seeing. A head-to-head -head battle. The most greedy people that have ever inhabited this planet are here right now. The most power-hungry people that have ever inhabited this planet are here right now. The most peace-loving people that have ever inhabited this planet are here right now. If we try to resist e evil, we've had it. It's the sinking of Atlantis again. If we let thine eye be single, fixed on God, we sail into the golden age. Now, I, I got kind of, not kind of, heavily ridiculed back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Talk of all the earth changes, talk of nuclear war, and I was published in a little newspaper as saying, we will not have nuclear war. California will not fall in the ocean. The peace-loving souls on this planet have tilted the balance to peace. Now, it's going to take a few years for it to outpicture, but it has happened. The game is over, folks. Peace has won. Graduation time is approaching. Earth is a school. Everybody graduates eventually, even if you're, you know, we're sent back three grades. You graduate eventually. And peace has won this game. And my visions, no better than yours. You go inside, ask to see, we'll do some of this today. Ask to see the future. What's my future going to be like? What's the future of the planet? We'll do that. That's a good little exercise. And you'll get your own picture of that sort of thing. Okay? But mine is, we are in, 2012 was a shift. 2012 was a shift. The average person on the planet doesn't know anything happened in 2012, you know, except who won the World Series or something, the Stanley Cup or whatever. But it was a shift. The shift happens in the invisible before it manifests in the visible, always. Happens in the invisible first. That's where you want to look. You want to know what the future's going to be like? Look in the invisible. Okay? Now, what I see is between now and 2017, what's that? Four years? See, I'm good with math. Four years is the 
biggest shift in terms of outpicturing the manifestation of changes that appear dramatic. Okay? So we have things we don't hear about anymore, but there are, on the internet, there are websites. There have been 1,900 bankers ousted from office and many of them arrested in the last year and a half, and it never makes the news. These were people who were dominating, who make a living off keeping everybody else in debt. That's been a big part of the plan of the, whatever you call them, the greedy folks, right? They're being thrown out right and left, right and left, right and left. Okay. The shift is happening. People are becoming more compassionate, more humanitarian. Nothing can stop it. Absolutely nothing can stop it. So in four years, if you were to leave now and come back in four years, you'd say, that can't be. What? No fighting in politics? You know? No politicians trying to implement their agenda of control and manipulation? Can you imagine politics existing for the benefit of humanity? One of the greatest things I saw was the military. The military will not be gone in four years or five years, but the military will look much more like the Peace Corps in five years out there helping people. Wow, what a deal. You know, the United States is the biggest bully on the planet, trying to dominate every nation, make everybody comply with the United States government or shadow government, whichever way you look at it. Get everybody to do their bidding, right? It, there's going to be a time when people on the planet actually begin to appreciate the United States again instead of fearing the United States, which they do now, which is not on the news. Our government controls everything. The news media has been controlled. You know? It's all coming together. It's all coming back. Yeah. If we are the most powerful in control, we are shifting to be the most powerful in peace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. A couple of years ago, I took a class, a philosophy class, and it was called Is There a God? Speak up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I took a philosophy class, and it was called Is There a God? And the instructor was adamant about there is none, because the loving God would not allow all of the mess we're in. And then I had to do a paper on free will. But So what you're saying in today is if nothing is wrong that we do, then where, where is the God and the evil of, you know, come into play? Is there a Satan or an evil entity out there that causes the greed and the discord, and then the peace be God. I, I want to understand where you're coming from. So the way you phrased that, I can't really answer with a yes or a no. Is there a devil? Yes. Where is the devil? In your mind. Everything's in your mind. I like devil spelled backward is lived, right? You choose whether you're going to be in pain, struggle, peace, joy. So that's heaven or hell. Heaven or hell exist. You know people who are in hell, they're just miserable, right? You don't have to go anywhere to be in hell. You don't go anywhere to be in heaven. It's a choice. Yeah, I want to be happy. I want to be miserable. I, have, I get all these benefits from being a victim. I get all these benefits from being unhappy. You know, that's what the ego says. You should stay that way. 
you know, for whatever reason, okay? Nothing exists except in your mind. Change your mind, you've changed all of reality. Now, we started into this the other night, other evening, about, you know, well, am I creating or are they creating? Which one of us is creating this, you know? Well, there's only one of us. It gets back into the theoretical stuff again that, oh yeah, well, I understand theoretically that there's only one, but I don't understand that in a practical sense, right? Hey, the universe is bigger than anything we can comprehend. You know how many dimensions of reality there are? You know, we're in third dimension time space and a lot of the new age talk has been about, well, the fifth dimension is coming or we're gonna exist, shift into the fifth dimension or what. What does that mean? I, you know, I have no idea what any of this means, uh, anything. But, you know, I did have that experience where they showed me what time meant in fourth dimensional reality and what time meant in fifth and sixth dimensional reality and there was no time beyond that. There's, there's a hundred dimensions of, I mean a thousand, I mean a million, I mean an infinite number of dimensions of reality. How far up the ladder of infinity is three? What can we possibly know about reality? It's science fiction beyond science fiction. We couldn't possibly comprehend it. Yeah. What was the first reality like? If we're in the third. <laughs> <laughs> I was shown that there is a two-dimensional time-space reality, right? So our three dimensions are length, width, and height plus time. So in two-dimensional reality, everything exists on a flat plane. They have width and length, but they have no height. And they exist there, and they think that's what it is. Anybody see uh, what the bleep do, you, do we know or whatever? They had a nice little depiction of two-dimension time space uh, in there, yeah. We just have to get very, very, very comfortable with the fact that we don't have a clue. You know, sometimes movies come out and they kind of reveal in, in a very hidden way. And I always thought The Matrix was an interesting one because when he gets taken and shown, this isn't reality, what you're seeing, that everybody is, you, did, you didn't see that movie. I didn't see no. that. No, but I've heard other people say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, it's hard to believe that there is a simple answer to every complex question, but there is. There's a simple answer to every complex question. Uh, very closely related, but free will does not have to operate from ego. If it operates from the logical mind, it's ego. If it operates from insight, from connection, from guidance, it's not ego. So free will can create universes in a very loving manner for the benefit of everything that is, and that would not be ego. Or free will can say, I want control, I want power, I want this, give me that, and that's going to lead you down a dead end, so, yeah, yes. So from what you said, if you, you know, you were saying about follow your breath and go with, we have to believe that everything we do is right, even if it doesn't turn out right for everybody, right, I mean, for ourselves. That's a good step right there. That's a very good step, I think. And do carry it on into there is no right or wrong, there's just isness. Now, one person pointed out to me that we talk about love, but we can only talk about love because we believe in lack of love. We have to have the contrast to understand the concept. You know, they say f fish don't know about water. 
Water just is. It is what they live in. They, don't, they aren't aware of water. Birds may not be aware of air. I don't know. You know. If you're just in love, you wouldn't have no reason to be thinking about love. It's just the allness. So contrast. Contrast gives us individuality. It gives us motivation. Get out of what feels bad. Try to get into what feels good. Right? So the contrast, which, as I understand it, does not exist in the infinite, but here appears to exist. So it certainly motivates us. I don't want harm. I don't want pain, struggle. I want peace of mind. I want the pressure to be off. Okay. So I don't know. Does that help? <laughs> but it can still change what our right. Yeah. What you think is right today and what you think is right absolutely. tomorrow. Yes, absolutely, yes. Not even think about contrast is this kind of way. Yeah. But just keep in the back of your mind. The universe would not allow harm. That, that's your exit strategy <laughs> when you're stuck in a no-win situation. Right? The universe would not allow harm. There must be another way of looking at this. That's a phrase from A Course in Miracles. There's another way of looking at this. I could see this differently. Yeah. Yes? I always have a question. Um, when you say isness, I took a, a Huna course and I heard the phrase suchness. Such is the nature of. Is it the same thing? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So they, they were explaining that, um, like in families in Hawaii, ancient, they would get the kahuna together, and if they were fighting, he would mediate, and he would say, such is the nature of this person to be the way they are. Mm -hmm. And if you can accept their suchness. Sure. Yeah, we judge everybody as being wrong. You know, if you're different than me, you're wrong. Okay? And we have no idea why people are the way they are. We think they're wrong because they're bad, or wrong because they're just plain mean, or, you know, we don't know what they were doing 10 lifetimes ago, 100 lifetimes ago, what their karmic history is. We don't know anything about anybody. How could we judge them? It is their nature. Such is the nature. Okay, I can accept anything. Underneath it, somewhere underneath it, is love. And if you try to talk to somebody and they start telling you about their experience and why didn't you have that experience? It's, it's, they can only see. Yeah, we learn to become listeners not judging, not correcting, right? All correction belongs to the spirit realm. We can't fix anybody. If, we, if you just subtly indicate somebody is wrong, the walls go up, the defense mechanisms come out, right? You aren't going to change me. So the only way we can open the door for people to get more insight into their life and what it's all about is just to be there. When you're just there with no judgment, you are a channel and spirit can come through you and do healing. Spirit can go directly into their mind and do healing, whatever. Hmm. Let's take a eight minute and 37 second break.